Welcome to DeltaCast Tutorials. Today I'll be applying a posterior splint with a medial lateral stirrup. Some people may call it an L and a U. Some people may even call it uh, just a, a slab on the posterior of the extremity and then a stirrup. So we're gonna be using orthoglass, but we need to pay attention to two factors, the injury and positioning. So the injury is gonna be concentrated in the ankle area of the patient and the way we're gonna put on the posterior slab, the injury can be up in the ankle area, can be in the metatarsals, can be in the phalanges or the toes portion. The goal with this is to ensure that the patient's at 90 degrees or neutral position. Now what's important is two occasions when it's not advised to put the patient in a 90 degrees of angulation is when the patient has a comminuted fracture or is broken in many places, or they have an Achilles rupture. Okay, and the position is gonna be determined by the physician, but you do not wanna put that patient in a 90 degree angle or neutral position. So with that being said, now let's talk about three positions that we're gonna get the patient in. One position is to have the patient seated. And remember, as you do this, the patients, is, they're already swollen. So they're gonna have pulling the fluid going distally. With that being said, you need to do that expeditiously. Maybe the patient is really uh, heavy and it's hard to manage and move the patient. Sometimes the patient has to put this application on in an actual wheelchair because of the nature of their body. Or we may have a situation where the patient is incapacitated a certain way, so we have to be ready for all different positions. The next frame, we're gonna just show you other positions. Again, this is the seated position. It's gonna be a little bit more harder to apply this one because gravity will be working against us. Okay, so now we have the other position the patient is. They're laying on their back. Sometimes this can be very comfortable for the patient, or sometimes it's not because maybe the patient has problems breathing. Maybe the patient is with child and is heavy on their chest and they're breathing. So we gotta be conscious of that. But again, we have the leg elevated above the chest, so we don't have to worry about a whole bunch of pulling the fluid going distally. So that way we can take care of the patient's extremity and do what we need to do without a lot of effort. All right, we have the patient in what we call a prone position. And again, now the patient is laying down and now we're gonna use gravity to help us apply this splint. If the patient is laying on their stomach and maybe they have troubles breathing or they're with child, they're really far along, this may not be as comfortable, but this is gonna be the easiest for the clinician to apply. All right, so let's go ahead and measure for the posterior splint. And what we're gonna do is just show you this real fast. We're gonna lift the leg up. We're gonna go just a little bit here past the toes, as far as the splint itself, and have a little bumper that we're gonna make so that when the patient is walking with crutches, at times the patient may lose their proprioception or know where their toes are when they swing through with the crutches. So we're gonna have a little bumper just to protect the toes, and then, as we go further proximal, we're gonna stop this so that 90 degrees, the patient doesn't feel the splint digging in the back of their leg. That's super uncomfortable for the patient. So that's why we wanna make sure that this measurement is pretty good. So the best way to do that is just, you can use a tape measure or some padding. We're gonna have this about two inches past the tips of the toes. When we get ready to apply the splint, we're gonna fold the splint like that. And so we have a nice little thick bumper. So this is the measurement for the posterior splint. Put that aside. And just for my own habit, I always like to put whatever I'm gonna do for the posterior slab on the left. And let's do the stirrup. Now, different uh, train of thought on the stirrups. And that is gonna be our lateral and to medial stirrup, or the U, if you will. You can have it two ways depending on the patient's injury, but just a general term, you wanna have the stirrup. You wanna have that the same uh, termination point as the posterior slab, okay? Or at least to the widest portion of the calf. So that's my stirrup. So I'll put that there. But now let's go ahead and pad the patient and get some comfort on the patient. You can add stockinette if you want. I'm not gonna add stockinette so you can see everything in detail. So we'll just start by covering up the end of her foot. And we wanna make sure that this is smooth as possible because this is areas injured or down here, and we don't want any whole bunch of shifting 
of the foot inside of the splint. Do a figure eight going around the ankle. Take care of the heel. And then you start going proximal. You're gonna do what we call a 50-50 coverage. Every revolution around, we're trying to cover 50% of what we just put on. If you miss something per chance, just go ahead and apply more padding. And the areas that's most likely missed is the heel area. And sometimes people over pad the ankle, so be conscious of over padding the ankle. And what do you want to have at least a minimum of two layers, a max of four? And you want to have also the padding, at least a, a quarter of an inch past where the splint will go. So I have this nice and padded. Now, after you get done padding the patient, we're going to palpate over the bony promises just to ensure that we have it padded correctly. And just gently touch that on the patient because they're going to be very uncomfortable as it is. Again, I like to show the patient on the uninjured extremity what we're going to do. So I'll tell them how we're going to get them positioned so they can be ready for me to put their extremity in position. So let's go ahead and cut the orthoglass. We're going to cut the posterior slab first and then the stirrup. Now, what's important, I have two different sizes. Maybe the patient's size of their leg is small or large, what have you. But most of the time, you want to use a four inch or a five inch on most adults and a three inch maybe on small children. But the stirrup itself, you want to be conscious that when you apply your stirrup, that it doesn't totally encompass the extremity as you add that, because then we have more of a circular closure around the patient's extremity, almost like a cast. And remember, they're going through the inflammation stage of this injury. So let's get a four inch here. And let's put this down just for a second. Okay, put that back over there. Now let's cut because this patient's extremity is a little bit smaller in diameter, I'm gonna use a three inch for the stirrup itself. So let's get these splints ready now. Here's my posterior slab. I'm gonna take care of the ends of this so we don't have any edge hanging out that can cause any discomfort to the patient. I cut this when it was fairly new, so it had a nice little padded edge already. And let's go pull the stirrup portion out. Take care of this. And remember, we want to have this one terminate at least to the widest portion of the calf or the same distance where the posterior slab is located. So I'm going to dip it in a little bit of water, and they're going to be activated at the same time. That means that we're not going to put on the posterior slab, wrap it up, and then put the stirrup on, and then wrap it up. And it kind of put a little bit too much pressure on the leg. These are going to be put on at the same exact time. So what I did is disperse the water throughout the whole splint. Now let's go ahead and get all the extra moisture out of these. Uh, we're ready to go. Go ahead and lift the patient's leg up gently. 
and we just place the posterior slab on. And you notice I have this overlap. So now I can see that this is nice and padded on the ends. And all I do now is grab a little bit of padding, fold this back to where it's like maybe a, a quarter of an inch past the tips of the toes. Secure this with some padding. Do that gentle because the patient is gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. Center the splint, make sure it's centered on the posterior aspect. Secure it with some padding. Do the same thing around the calf area. Let's go ahead and add the stirrup. And some people place this in different places, but the stirrup is going to be on the lateral sides of the leg. So we have this positioned. And this way, now all we have to do is apply our elastic bandage and position the patient. Again, you can use stockinette on this if you want to. Have all your elastic bandages ready. All right. Start on the distal end. Hold this portion snug so you, it doesn't unravel. And now we have that started. Go a little bit more on the base of the foot and then go ahead and do a figure eight going around the ankle. Again, we don't have to worry about our splints moving around on us, but the faster you do this, the more this will contour really easy on the patient's extremity. So at this time, I will start telling the patient to get ready about you know, their position. I'll start saying, hey, ma'am or sir, I gotta get your uh, foot down in just a few minutes, so I just wanna give you a heads up on that. And again, you may be feeling a little bit of warmth, and that's from the exothermic reaction of the splint material, the fiberglass is activated with the water. So I'll finish this up, go distally if need be, but don't pull too much, especially if you can see through your elastic bandage, that means more than likely you're pulling a little bit too much. All right, so now we have that, and this is important about the placement of your hand. This is the lateral side of the patient's foot, this is the medial side, and then there are the toes. We wanna put our hand mid-lateral mid there, and then we want to stabilize the leg itself or the calf as you lower the foot down to neutral position. If you had an assistant holding for you, that's what they will be doing as you're wrapping it. I'm just still slowly getting this patient down in the position. Again, if you're a shorter individual, this would be helpful for you because you can get on a step stool and just let gravity help you. All right. So we got this patient down in a neutral position. Some people may even go to a, a little bit more dorsal flex. And so when the patient relaxes, the foot will naturally be in that neutral position that they need to be in. I tend to make sure that the patient stays uh, neutral and just keep it that way. Definitely watch your fingers as you uh, are pressing down this. You don't want to have any indentations in this. And all we do now is wait for this thing to set. It's going to set in three to five minutes and cure in 15 to 20. So we really want to make sure that now we'll start to look at other things. We want to make sure that the foot is not inverted or everted. So look straight on the toes as you hold the patient's position. 
And then next you ask the patient, hey, do you feel anything poking you on the size of your ankle? Do you feel anything squeezing the size of your toes? If they're squeezing the size of their toes, you can just flare it back out, okay, away from their toes. But one of the key things you wanna make sure of that you can visually see each of the distal ends of the toes. So we'll take care of that at the very end. So let's see where we are with this splint here. Let's move this out the way. And you think you can keep your leg just like this for me. Don't move. If you worry about the patient moving, then you have to stay here. Okay, so now the last step I'm gonna do is turn the patient on their back so that I can adjust this and look at their toes. And I'm gonna straighten this all up right now. All right, so now what I've done, I have this patient change the position so I can look at it because I got the patient in a neutral position. And we, of course, will wait for it to totally cure before we go ahead and do this portion, but we can add a bandage on here just to ensure that is, matter of fact, let me use a little smaller width. Put this around the edge of the splint. Cover that all up. Make it neat. And now all we do is Expose those toes. All right. What we just completed was a posterior splint with a medial and lateral stirrup. And what's important that we concentrate on making sure the patient stays in a neutral position. Okay. And that is important that we keep that patient just like that. When you get done with this, you want to make sure that the foot is elevated above the heart while they're waiting for this thing to totally cure, or you have to stay like this and hold them. Um, the biggest thing is keeping it in the right position and start checking everything that you need to make sure the blood flow is going well. Make sure they can move their toes back and forth. Just wiggle your toes for me. All right. And make sure that this portion up here, the posterior area, is not cutting in the back of their thigh area. That can be very uncomfortable and make sure you touch the toe, make sure you check the temperature of both extremities versus the other, just to ensure that there's no anything odd that needs to uh, bring attention to the physician. Other than that, three ways you gotta remember, the supine, the prone, and the sitting up position. Thank you very much. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, Contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.